Welcome to our regular weekly press briefing. Uh, let me share some of the significance that happened last week. First, PNP welcomes approval by the National Police Commission and BAC of the revised certification program for police investigators, police detectives, and case managers to improve the PNP's crime clearance efficiency and crime solution efficiency and enhancing the proficiency of its field investigators. NAPOL Com Circular Number MC Number 2020-006 entitled Professionalizing the PNP Field Investigation Service through the implementation of a certification program for field investigators of the Philippine National Police and promulgating guidelines for the purpose is most timely and relevant institutional support to our desire to further professionalize, professionalize the police service by enhancing individual capability and skills of police personnel. Um, before I go ahead, let me first introduce again my dream team. Of course, my DCA, General Guido Lazar, my DCO, General uh, Cesar Hofer-Binag, and my PCS, General uh, Giorgio Veracruz, together with our PCIT, PICPM, uh, Director, no other than uh, uh, Major General Celso Pestano. Um, uh, I would like to bring also our Director, BIT. Kung nasa mga yung pangalan, kung lumaki, kilala ka na rin siguro, you know? Uh, soon to be Major, Major General Ed Monsalvo. The new memo circular promulgates the revised guidelines in the implementation of the certification program of the Philippine National Police. The composition of the certification board and the laterized standard procedure for the certification program. This certification program alone already serves two strategic trusts in the nine-point strategy or development plan, our, our strategic roadmap, PNP Plan 2030, on improving performance in crime prevention and solution and comprehensive human resource and skills development. My own intention actually is to develop all 200,000 police personnel, the basic skills, set of marksmanship, and crime investigation. Under this, Police events, investigators, detectives, and case managers shall be authorized to wear the respective spe specialization badge and shall be entitled to receive a specialist pay. pay. Second, on another subject matter that was par properly articulated last week by Secretary Harry Rock in response to the pronouncement of the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights, let me state for the record that human, human rights has never gotten in the way of the Philippine National Police campaign against illegal drugs and vice versa. Precisely because police anti-illegal drug operations are consistent with police operational procedures or rules of engagement that are founded on the fundamental principle to respect, protect, and fulfill human rights and to uphold the rule of law. Despite calls by the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights to turn our back from the anti-drug campaign, we will never lower our guard against a crime that destroys families and the moral fiber of our society, and certainly not while we are winning the war. In fact, we have made uh, a lot of strides in the supply reduction strategy against illegal drugs, such that of late there is no reported local production of shabu in the country, and that drug trafficking activities have been significantly checked due to pressure from police operations. However, the challenge event remains in the demand reduction strategy that takes more than law enforcement action, but a holistic approach by the stakeholders from the family, community, church, school, local government, and the much larger society. Still on illegal drugs, I have director our uh, new our new uh, director for PIDEC, coordinate closely with PIDEA and BUCOR to validate information of the alleged continued operation of illegal drugs 
activities by a convicted drug lord even while serving sentence inside prison. These revelations stem from a successful drug, by, uh, drug bypass operation in Cebu yesterday morning that resulted in the arrest of three suspects with seven kilograms of Shabu crystals estimated to be worth more or less 47.6 million. One of the couriers revealed that the seized drugs which came from San Carlos City, Negros Oriental belonged to a certain Rustico Digoy Igot, a convicted drug lord now serving sentence at the National Philippine Prison after he was convicted of drug charges in 2013. Early this year, PNP served the freeze order issued by the Anti-Money Laundering Council on two properties of Gil Eagle in Cebu. Elsewhere in the zone, Cordillera Police destroyed 68,800 fully grown marijuana plants, estimated at 13,960,000 in six different marijuana farm sites in Barangay Mugnay, in Lion, Kalinga yesterday morning. Also yesterday, in a separate incident in Bontoc Mountain Province, Local police recovered 17 marijuana bricks worth 2 million abandoned in Sitio Sukit, Samuki, Punto. I would like to point out that over a 17-day period from September 2 to September 19, the PNP has conducted 2,570 separate anti-illegal drug operations that resulted in the arrest of 3,615 drug offenders and the confiscation of 16.7 kilograms of shabu estimated to be 140 million in the street market. And third, on another matter related to three-point priority, particularly for internal security and counter-terrorism. The National Joint Peace and Security Court Co Coordinating Center, or the JPSCC, will convene on Wednesday, September 23. It will be hosted by the Philippine National Police and Army Coppercide with the AFP Chief of Staff, General Gilbert Gapay. I already invited him for said ability. Expected to attend the Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, DILD Secretary Eduardo Año, National Security Advisor Secretary Hermogenes Esperon, and NICA Director General Alex Paul Monte Agudo. The highlight of the National JPSCC is the signing of a joint letter directive that will set the guidelines in evaluating the effectiveness of internal security operations in support of the National Trust to end local communist armed conflict and declaration of dismantled guerrilla fronts. In a related development, uh, we would like to say that our continued efforts against domestic, domestic threat groups, uh, we are pleased to announce capture of another terrorist personally affiliated with the Gaula Isani and the terrorist group. Um, presented before you, Presented before you is Mr. Kevin B. Madrina, also known as Ibrahim Abdullah Madrina, and Ibrahim Khalil Al Garaba, who is peers in the Daula Islamia group. Madrina was arrested by operatives of the intelligence group and Quezon City Police District at 4.15 p.m. last Saturday, September 19, 2020, at Alterton Corner, Burbank Street, North Fairview, Quezon City. Upon his arrest, Madrina yielded a Calvor 45 with a high capacity magazine, hand grenade, and three pieces of 1,000 peso bills. Background investigation reveals that Madrina is a Malik Islam convert who is a contact person and liaison in the zone of the Ula Isabia members coming from Mindanao under Ismail Abdul Malik and Atta Abu Tayyut Raifa, Raifa, and Salahuddin Hassan at Abu Salman, and those coming from Sulu under Mundi Sawajan. He assumed responsibility as the zone liaison of the Holy Islamite Asamiya after the arrest of Dr. Omar Palte at Alan Palti in Jason City in January 1, 2020. Madrina is also responsible for the recruitment of Malik Islam converts and facilitating their travel to Mindanao for training and jihad exposure. Madrina has links with Yusuf Makuto of Cavite and Muhammad Paras Sabulakan but he was left behind in the zone when Makutin Paras joined the Ola Islamia forces in the siege of Marawi City in 2017, where they both died. So, you can now see, uh, we are doing our job, and uh, we would like to congratulate, of course, the uh, intelligence group and the QCPD, the SILG conveys its recognition of said uh, omission. In other police operations against organized crime groups, 
The PNP anti-criminal anti-kidnapping group arrested seven wanted persons who are the subject of one warrant of arrest issued by courts for heinous crimes, particularly kidnapping during week-long operations from September 13 to 19, 2020. During the same period, two anti-kidnapping operations were conducted, resulting in the safe rescue of a Taiwanese Pogo employee in Makati, who was held captive in exchange for 15,000 uh, RMB ransom by his kidnappers. On September 16, two gunmen died. Another suspect was arrested when they offered armed risk resistance to a lawful search conducted by AKG groups for operatives on borders of Honorable Sincha Marino de Coblanca of RTC Santa Cruz, Laguna, against Rodel Basi and Sichi Babao II, Barangay Tulong Bayan, Teresa Rizal. Sub-suspect Rodel Basi and his son Romar died in the gun battle while another son, John Romel, was subdued and arrested. AKG operative, operatives recovered a 9mm Pietro Doretta pistol and a 12-gun and 20-shot gun from suspects. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the highlights of last week. I will be glad, we will be glad to further clarify, clarify your other concerns. Thank you, sir. 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 Any questions from the PNP Press Board? Yeah, if, if there are questions, there are questions. Mr. Please uh, have the mic and uh, introduce yourself if you are asking the question. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Mr. Bonnie. Mr. Bonnie, the arrestor of Kevin Madrilan, the AKG body. Mr. Bonnie, can you tell me, sir, how do you know the suspect of the arrest of the suspect? Can you tell me, sir, how do you know the suspect of the arrest? Mm -hmm. um, he was arrested by operatives of the intelligence group in Quezon City Police District at 4.15 p.m. last Saturday, September 19, 2020, at Atherton Corner, Burbank Streets, North Fairview, Quezon City. Uh, he, it was a very long uh, casing or monitoring on his on him by the uh, uh, intelligence group. Uh, that's still, he's, still, he's still under investigation and a lot of uh, information will be taken from him. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, uh, I'm from uh, Bobo Radio. Uh, I'm Well, hindi pa rin natin kung ano, he is under investigation, we are monitoring him. At tinitingnan natin yung mga recruitment activities niya na ginagawa dito sa Manila. Lahat kasi ng mga nire-recruit niya, nagbabalik Islam, pinapadala lahat siya sa Mindanao for exposure on uh, set activities doon mismo sa Mindanao. So, even yung pumapasok dito, atin na tinitingnan ang sinasabi natin border control. At lahat ng mga target sila, hardin din na hardin natin. But, uh, we will still be investigating him and we will extract a lot of information from him. Uh -huh. Sir, kung dito sa members ng, ano, ng mga Dawla Islamia, may mga other information pa ba tayo? Last week, sir, na tanong kita, sir, regarding yeah. sa presence ng uh, foreign terrorists. Ibig sabihin, sir, may mga connection din ba sila sa mga foreign terrorists na possible na magpasok ko ng bansa? I will give you, I will give you uh, General Monsalve to explain further. Uh, magandang panga po sa mga kapatid natin sa media. Yung question mo po ma'am, uh, yung foreign terrorist natin, ang relations po niya, at based on information, ay kung po directly sa Mindanao. Si Madrigan po, ang connect na niya po ay sa Laukan. Yung po connection ng foreign terrorist natin, ang din yung tinasawadyaan, tinasalaw, tinasal. Doon po yung direct connect. Kasi po yung organization na yun, yun po yung umbrella organization na nakukunit po sa outside uh, terrorist organization also. Maraming salamat po. So sir, uh, kamusta sir ang ano natin, ang monitoring natin sa presence ng mga terrorist 
Maybe na sir, like mga suicide bombing uh, incident sir, meron pa ba tayong nagmonitor ng mga suicide bombing sir? Ayan po ang tinututukan, tulad niya po nang nasabi ng ating CPP na ang intelligence, lalo-lalo na ang intelligence group ay magpo-focus sa counter-terrorism. Doon po sa mga ganunan, yan po ang tinututukan natin. Pati po dito sa Metro Manila, sa Rosor, lahat po tinututukan natin. Sa ngayon po ma'am, doon po sa mga ganunan, ang ating uh, tinututukan ay yung mga alleged report nila, tinutulipay natin. Okay. Kasi, uh, General Pascual, sir, sir, akabangit niyo din yung refresher training sa mga katulisan natin sa Sa province ng Sulu. Sir, paano gagawin yung refresher training ng PNP doon sa mga tropa natin sa probinsya ng Sulu? Unang-una, no, this is part of the skills uh, skills management. Yung sinasabi natin, individual training is isa yan. Pag sinabi mong unit training, buong unit yan, para maging magiging mas mahusay sila pag nagkaroon sila ng mga activities na kailangan ng teamwork. Gagawin natin yan in place. Unit trainings will be in place. Though, actually, they will be changed for a while. Pagkatapos ng unit training lang, it's a refresher course, they will give up on how, what to do in, in uh, uh, anti-criminal activities and anti-insurgency uh, uh, operations or anti-terrorism activities. After that, they will be going back to the units, fresh, and they will have a start again. So, when can we expect the training, sir, na mag-umpisa? Alam nyo, nung ECDS ako, nung unit training na kami nun, nung nung pa. Uh, kung malala nyo, dalawang master sergeant ang namatay kayo sumabot ang isang granada sa Dabao Sur, Santa Cruz. We had that unit training already and I was the one who led that. We will do, be doing this. We are studying. Uh, we're just so busy right now because it's just my third week. We hope that we would be able to come up with all unit trainings on certain activities by the first week of October. Thank you, sir. 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 Sabi ko nga sa inyo, may border control tayo ng mga operatiba. Once na pumasok sila, nire-report na sila, tapos binaman man na sila pag dumating dito sila sa Manila. Maganda yan at nahuhuli natin palagi at pinumonitor natin ang gusto. Nakikita rin natin kung sino yung mga pinupunta nila at saan sila pinupunta. At ang uh, isa po dyan ay uh, uh, hindi nila basta-basta magagawa yan kung walang tulong ng komunidad. Kaya nga nakikiusap kami parati sa mga komunidad kung merong mga kahit kay hinahinalang mga tao na nakubiibot po sa mga lugar nyo, i-report po kagad sa pinakamalapit na police station. Sir, anong effort ng PNP sa mga Muslim community para tulungan ang PNP na mag-monitor kapag may mga pumapasok na hindi pinalari sa komunidad nila? Yeah, even long before, ginagawa na natin itong uh, pagbaba sa komunidad sa barangay. Meron tayo sa 9-point agenda natin ng bayanihan po. At ang isa doon ay ang Community Service Oriented Policy na ginagawa nga ng National Club. Pinapagawa ng National Police Commission under uh, SILG, uh, Secretary Anyo. Ito yung pagbaba sa barangay, pagtutulong at pagkikisa sa mga pinag-pinagawa sa barangay. Hindi lang yan. Dito sa COVID, ginawa natin si General, uh, uh, General uh, Ginoon Ipiasar, siya yung commander ng JTF Sirisir, bumababa siya at nakikibagay sa lahat ng mga ginagawa ng mga barangay. Nung kami yung nasa ASCOT, ang ASCOT natin ngayon ay si General Cesar Pina. Ang ginagawa namin dyan ay ginawa namin ang barangay enforcement teams, ang mga marshals, at saka pati ang red team para makahulubino natin ang mga tao sa baba. At makita natin kung tama rin ang ginagawa ng police at saka kung tama rin ang ginagawa ng mga barangay officials. Sa ganun paraan, magkakaroon tayo ng pag-iisa. At pag sinabi natin pong pag-iisa, united, we call, united, we fight as one. And these things are being done almost even before. We just have to emphasize it right now, tell the barangay officials that this is, should be, this should be done, we should know what to do, and we should know how to do it right. That's why we have the enhanced management of these operations. Yeah, Ang 
brothers natin ang mamanmanan natin. Lahat po tayo ay minamanmanan. Aalamin dapat natin kung may mga illegal tayong mga ginagawa kung nakikisama tayo sa pakikibata ng ating mga kaibigan sa kaluwa o nakikisama tayo sa mga kaibigan natin sa mga terorista dapat natin mulihin. Hindi po yun ang utos ko. Ang utos ko po ay lahat po tayo ay monitor. Kaya na dito sa kapulisan, dito pa lang, internally, paano namin mamomonitor ang kada ang activities ng kada isa? meron po tatangin tinatawag na body-body system. Kung ako, ang body ko siguro ay si General Ilesar, ang DCA. Ang body ni DCO, si TCDS. Para kung meron nararamdaman na hindi maganda dahil sa COVID, marireport po kagad ng isa. Kung meron namang ginagawang kalupuhan, malalaman po ng isa at malalang magkakabayan. Ganyan po ang body system namin. Kung hindi man, wala po kami nagawa, tulad po na sinabi namin, hindi ho namin tinotolerate ang mga illegal activities and at the same time katiwalian sa kapulisan. Lalo't lalo na pag lumabas po kami, external cleansing. External cleansing means not only, hindi lang po isang populasyon, lahat po tayo ay minomonitor. Kaya nga, kautusan po natin sa lahat, lahat po natin kapulisan dapat alam po ang nangyayari sa kanilang komunidad. For other matters po, yung pag-alis uh, I'd like to be frank. It's not hindi lang po police ang may kasalanan dito lahat po tayo. Hindi ba? Dapat matuto tayo. Sa amin po sa kapulisan, sinabi nga po namin siyo, we always follow the rule of law. And when we follow the rule of law, we have no choice. It's command responsibility. And I emphasize command responsibility there when I was doing my first speeches. Mahirap po talaga para sa kapulisan, pero wala po kami magagawa. Kailangan matuto po ang ating komunidad sa ginawa po namin. Siguro naman po sasabihin ko sa amin eh, mali yata yun. Pero dapat isipin nyo, saan din kayo nagkamali? Dapat hindi narilim yung aming kapulisan kung ginawa namin ang tama. Di ba? Hindi po yung polis mag-iisip eh. Eh, konsyensya nyo na yun. Kung bubuluhin nyo kami at kami maririnig, eh, yun po magiging problema. Pero, gawin po natin ang tama. Makiisa tayo, kaya nga nang sinabi ko sa inyo, united, we will fight as one. And your policemen will remain to be respectable, responsible, and disciplined. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Leia. Okay, uh, one last question. Sige, ma'am. Uh, the chief has made another undertaking. Sir, uh, how far does the commander's responsibility go? May madadami pa ba sir na ito pang mga uh, heads po, lalo na sa NTP? Well, uh, it's so sana funny. But uh, I, I, I want to have the JTF COVID shield answer it. Because one of the things that we really have to do is the responsibility with regard uh, with regard to this kind of uh, pandemic was given up with the JT of City Shield and as I said, he is the leader of my dream team, he, I mean uh, he is the assistant team leader of my dream team and we will continue to cooperate. So may I ask uh, the Lord to please explain. Thank you, sir. Uh, yesterday morning, after the, the kids began to buy ride, I immediately talked with this director as well as the station commander. Alam mo, nung Sabado, during the opening of that particular uh, Manila Bay Sands, nakita naman natin na dumagsana niyo yung tao. Hindi lang ganun karami. And it was publicized. Yun ang controversial yung area yun. And alam natin na the following Sunday, the following day Sunday, talagang dudumupin ng mga tao yan. And uh, talking with uh, General Miranda, sinabihan din niya yung kanyang record. Ngayong pinabukasan, nakita ka natin talagang grabe ang violation. Tumak mo doon si General Miranda, kasama yung kanyang ibang mga tao at naayos nila. Ibig sabihin, pwede nyo pala mayusin. So it could be prevented. So nagkunang ng initiative ang station commander to do that at na-resolve ito ng district director. So in so far as we are concerned, upon my discussion with Chief ENT, he decided na i-relink ang station commander doon sa lapses ng iyan. Hanggang doon lang talaga? Hanggang doon lang talaga siya. Kasi nakita natin si John Miranda. Siya ang nag-resolve, nag-responde. Kung uh, pinag-aralan ng hito yun at nag-request na siya initially, ng additional person knowing 
nagtatag dito ay tatag sa mga tao, hindi nangyari yun. Thank you very much. Okay, Ma'am Bayo. You're out of order. Okay, Ma'am. Okay, Ma'am Yunis. Let that be a point. Let that be a lesson not only to the PMP, but all of us. Because if you do that, we will always, we will always do our job as PMP. That's why, Uh, hindi lang po laban ng polis ito ni COVID na laban po natin dahil. Siguro mas maganda, maguturoan din natin ng mga ating mga kababayan para gumawa ng tama. Okay, last yes, question yes. from you, Mr. Uh, Filipino Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, regarding po sa Uh, okay, I'll give you to our ASCOT commander, okay? Alam niya, alam, doon ko alam ko rin, alam niya, uh, para po, okay? Yes, sir. General Pinag. Thank you, sir. Uh, Agreed ko yan, yung sa contact tracing natin, tapos yung uh, concern ng ASCOT, yung protection ng police natin ngayon, kasi uh, yun naman ang isa sa napakakalagang sinasabi ng ating hepe. Lahat ngayon ang ating stasyon, down the line, no? magmula sa region, tapos dito sa HQ, bababa, meron na tayong contact tracing teams. Yun ang, uh, tapos, tinraining yan, uh, yung nga yung kay General Magalog, kay Mayor Magalog, sa yung nakakandak ng uh, training, assisted by our uh, CIDG. Tapos, meron din tayong ginagamit na contact tracing na uh, apps, parang homegrown dito sa ano, sa PNP. Ito yung ating uh, contact tracing uh, city digs, kung tawagin natin. So, nakalatag yan, pero nagpa-function sila, siyempre, in coordination with the local government unit kasi nandun yung ating mga health uh, officers ng uh, LGUs na yun ang sinusuportahan ng ating mga ating mga contact tracing teams. So, nakalatag yan, at ongoing yung kanila. Okay. I-support pa nung sa ating sa DIA. Okay? Sir? Oh. Hello, sir. Kumusta po yung mga polis na nagtapos na humilated sa Yes, yes. Correct. Oh, meron tayong kinatawag ng medical reserve force, no? Lahat ng ating mga police na merong mga medical forces, no? Na nasa line units, binuo natin sila dito sa NHQ, tapos dyan sa regions, at sila yung ginagamit natin yung impact, nakadeploy sila sa PICC, yung ating uh, quarantine center doon, dito sa Ultra, at uh, yung iba pa, dito rin sa Krami, meron din tayo at sa iba pang uh, areas natin. So, at uh, yun, kinuha natin sila, kaya uh, very effective yung paggamit natin sa ating mga um, police na may medical background, medical course background, na nasa line unit. At dito sa NCR, maganda yung ginawa nila, sa bawat police station na yun, meron din ang tinatawag na station health unit. Ganda nun, kasi yung station health unit, ang trabaho niya, siguraduhin, yung mga pulis sa, sa stasyon ay uh, protektado dito sa COVID at sumusunod nga sa ating sa uh, protocol ng ating uh, dito sa uh, COVID response natin. Ano nga yung mga pulis? May number po kayo? Ano to? More than thousands ng ano natin. Uh, yung uh, uh, mga pulis na mayroong medical ano, uh, background. Sir, hindi na lang po. Okay, oh, ito, isa-isay natin yan, ah, yung ating RT-PCR, meron na tayo dito, tapos inaugurate yung uh, official fiscal building sa ating sa health service. Uh, ongoing ngayon yung processing, yung pag-apply ng uh, accreditation sa DOH, tapos yung namang building sa Pro7, uh, we expect to complete the building by the end of this month. Then, ipaprocess din yung accreditation kasi mahaba yan, may proseso yan. Uh, kailangan pa dyan ng mga technical expert yung uh, uh, na kailangan kumasa sa, sa DOH. Tapos yun nga, ito sa ongoing din yung construction sa Mindanao. So, ang um, gusto ng ating hepe, uh, lahat at least uh, uh, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao at dito sa NHQ natin, meron tayong sarili ng RT-PCR na ito yung mga uh, testing center na mga alaga no? uh, ng, ng uh, 
nga para makitest sa ating mga kapulisan dahil nga sa mataas kasi ang uh, exposure uh, level namin dahil sa, sa nature ng trabaho namin kaya kailangan talaga meron kami ng ganito. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, I will add one thing, no? one, no? one thing is, that's why we need to implement the body-body system so that everybody will know what's happening between their bodies. Number two, we have a database for all the for all this data with regard to COVID. It's being taken charge by DICTM and IPMS so that we would be able to know no? what's happening. And yung nga, there is a sign we are doing a scientific study. Paano ba nakukuha ng ating kapulisan ang infeksyon ng COVID? Para malaman po natin kung paano natin patipigil yan. Dahil kung ang sasabihin lang po natin ay kung uh, umuwi siya, kung nagbabalik, siguro meron tamalian doon sa patuloy niya. Kaya dapat po yun. Yun ang ginaalam natin parati. Nakalistaw yan. Kaya nga po, nagkaroon na po tayo ng mga administrative personnel para mga siwa sa kanilang mga tao sa unit. Yung contact tracing, iba yung, pag, yung tinuturuan, iba yung contact tracers ang ginagamit din. Pero yung mga tinuturuan, yan yung mga CIC graduates, and at the same time, ito yung mga police na tinuturuan ng CIDG. Maliban yan, meron tayong naka-standby ng mga contact tracers, team of contact tracers for every region. At kung nakikita na namin na ang pandemic ay lumalala sa isang lugar, dumediretso na sila sa local government unit, at tinutulungan nila yung contact tracers ng LGU na yun. In so doing, we would be able to speed up, speed up the monitoring at the same time, uh, be able to prevent the spread of COVID. So, yun po ang sa COVID. We will continue with the marshals. We will they will continue with the barangay enforcement teams under the uh, barangay COVID defense or the BACOT, and they will continue with all the one, with all the uh, activities, most especially under criminality, insurgency, and terrorism. So, lahat po sa inyo. Maraming maraming pong salamat. Uh, sana po ay maging, uh, uh, ang tawag doon, magiging link namin kayo sa komunidad para makipag-cooperate po ang ating mga, ang mga taga-barangay, lalong-lalong na sa ating laban sa pandemic na po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Dr. Tomber, the members of the PNP Press Club.